I like Immunit, but I also like Expecti, so I combine the two. Let me show you how I did it so you can do it as well. Hey, Vlad here from devinsideu.com. Welcome to another video. I like Immunit. It's a really cool testing library. I like the assertions, I like the error messages, I like the output, and I really like that dot only thing, like, oh my god, where have you been all my life? All that said, I really didn't want to give up those gorgeous error messages from Expecti. Now you might be thinking, well, hold on a second there. Expecti is not a testing library, just a couple of methods that you can call instead of the assertions. What's the problem? You're right, and that's exactly what I did before I switched to Immunit. I've been a lifelong Scala test user, and when I discovered Expecti, I simply stopped using Scala test assertions, I replaced them with Expecti assertions instead. With Immunit though, I wanted my cake and eat it too. I wanted error reporting from both Immunit and Expecti. Long story short, I made it happen, and I'll tell you all about it right after the message from our sponsors, scalajobs.com and rasjobs.dev. Check out the links in the description below if you're looking for a job. This video is also brought to you by awesome people like yourself who support me on Patreon, GitHub sponsors, and the YouTube membership program. Your contributions go right back into this channel. They allow me to pay for a video editor who frees some of my time, which I usually spend again with you, whether it's during live streams or answering your questions on Discord. There's many of you and only one of me, so all it takes is a dollar. Huge shout out to my highest tier patron, Fred Albu. Thank you. All right, now, if you're new here, this is mostly a Scala channel, and I frequently need to set up projects from scratch for Scala while I'm recording my videos. So a long time ago, I created a couple of Jitterred templates to set up seed projects for Scala 2 and 3. As promised, I kept them up to date for years, and I've even been asked to convert them to an SBT plugin, which I decided not to do. Anyways, up until now, I've been using Scala tests in my templates, and I've set it all up in such a way that it's all very well integrated. You don't need any imports. There is Scala check. You can derive your Scala check arbitrary instances uh, with macros, etc., etc. As I already mentioned, at some point I stumbled on Expecti, and so I just stopped using the assertions from Scala test, and I started using the assertions from Expecti instead. I kept using Scala test though. And now that I've switched to MUnit, I like the error reporting both from MUnit and Expecti, so I found a way to combine them. I ended up needing to write a little bit of macros in Scala 2. It's very trivial macros, but still, and because macros in Scala 2 require to be in a separate project, unfortunately, my Scala C template for Scala 2 now feels a little bit bloated because now it's a multi-project SBT build. In fact, at the moment of recording, I haven't even updated those templates, but at the time you're going to be watching it, they will be up to date. Let me finally start showing you something. So I got two projects over here. Again, technically the template is not complete as of right now, but imagine that they have been created based on my templates. As soon as you're going to be watching this video, the, the templates are going to be ready as well. Okay, so uh, we're in this BT for uh, Scala 3 and uh, over here for Scala 2. Okay, I also have it open in VS Code. So this is the one for Scala 3. You can always see it on the package. And also I'm using the uh, you know, the significant uh, indentation uh, notation or whatever it's called. And this is the same thing in Scala 2. Okay, so we're going to start with Scala 3 because it's much simpler. This is basically a very simple uh, M unit test suite with three tests in it. As you can see, uh, I did it in such a way that you don't need any imports. Um, if you have been using my templates from before, you're pretty much familiar with the structure, right? So there is an example suite and it extends a test suite, which is like a prepared trade, which has a bunch of stuff mixed in. Okay. This is how you write tests in the unit. You say test, you know, it's very similar to the functional, uh, test suite from Scala test. Uh, so switching to a unit from Scala test was uh, very easy. Okay. So we have three tests over here. It's a, um, it's a current function. So the second parameter usually requires some, you know, some block of code, but because it's just one line, I used, you know, uh, the regular prints. Okay. So, uh, Scala, like M unit doesn't come with many assertions. Uh, it actually comes with only five. There's assert equals, assert not equals, assert, where you just give it a Boolean. Clues are optional, by the way. And there is two more for, you know, Boolean and, and floats, uh, where you can basically give it like a, of an error margin. So what I did was, is that, you know, somewhere in this trait, I'm mixing some stuff of my own. And this stuff is basically three different versions of these uh, assert methods, and their signatures are exactly the same. It's super, super tiny difference that I that I'll try not to forget to mention. But basically, they're all the same. It's just that they're called expect something, right? So they're called expect equals, expect not equals, and expect. Okay. But before I show them to you, let me show you how the output looks like right now. Okay. So as you can see, like all of these three tests will fail, right? Because obviously, two does not equal one. Uh, one and one are the same, and we're assuming that, that they're not. And obviously, an empty list should be empty, but you know we're seeing not empty, so all of them should fail. Okay, so let me zoom in into this one. I'm gonna write them all. Everything is already compiled, so uh, that's why it was super fast. If you're familiar with Immunit, this is a you know classic output from Immunit. We have three tests. You know we have A, we have B, and we have C. All of them fail for different reason. 
reasons. Uh, you got this nice looking thing that you can uh, search for in your CI jobs. You have the exact position. You have um, uh, your your exact code. I, by the way, I really like this thing. You know, it's, it's using macros to uh, to show exactly like on which line it failed. It failed over here. Assert equals. Uh, you know, this one failed at assert not equals, and this one failed at uh, at the last assert. So we have three tests A, B, C. Now for the assert equals, um, they're doing some you know fancy diffing. Uh, if you have seen any uh, videos about them unit, or if you have used it, you know if you have some you know nested case classes or whatever, it actually really tries to find you know the actual difference. So instead of showing you like two gigantic case classes, uh, it actually shows you the the difference over here is just two ints, so it doesn't look as impressive. However, for the others, uh, they basically say uh, you know over here, uh, you know it's it's a bit confusing. You know we we were expecting like these these two things not to be the same. But they actually turned it up to be the same. So it says like same, you know, one, but then for some reason it says was not one. It's a little bit confusing, but anyway, there's not, there's not, you know, it's, it's not as impressive as, as this one, for example. Okay. The same one for this one, you know, we passed in a clue, you know, there's a C clue, there's a B clue, and there is a, where's A clue? There's a clue, like they're optional, but basically you don't get much output from them. Okay, so uh, let's see what happens if you if you switch all of these asserts to expect. Okay, so we're gonna go expect here, here, and here. I'm gonna save the file. We're gonna run them again. Okay, and now we have this. Okay, so let me scroll up a little bit. Okay, so as you can see, we have the output both from M unit and expect. Okay, so we're not losing the clue that we passed in. Uh, we get this nice expected thing. If you've never seen expected, this is how it looks like. This is exactly why I wanted to keep it. We still get the diff from M unit. We still know the exact position. Uh, you know, we still have the highlighted stack traces. Okay, and in these ones, we get them as well. All right, so for example, for this one, expect not equals, you know, we still have the same output, but now it's just red, it's a little bit more in your face. We have this thing from expecty, okay, and this last one as well, okay. So instead of just like, you know, how it was before, where it was just basically failing and you, you know, you, you would need to like, you would need to like read into it, like look at this one. There's not that much information. Now we actually we actually have this whole thing, right? So we see, okay, like this is a this is an instance of a uh, you know this is an object called list, you know, and you know it's 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 not empty, like this is false and and so on. Okay, it actually looks slightly different in in Scala two. Uh, let me actually show this to you. So same deal in Scala two. I'm actually gonna go uh, immediately over here. I'm gonna go with expect over here, and here and here. All right, so. There we go again. I just wanted to show you that you know the output from uh, expecting Scala two looks slightly different. Okay, so it also shows you that this empty here, you know, is a is an empty list, and you also actually see the you know like the name of the method, like like this part, uh, this output was not there um, in Scala three, right? But this has nothing to do with to do with me. This is just how expected works. This is just the difference between Scala two and three. Okay, and by the way, I'm using West term, which is why I see ligatures, uh, you know, even inside of my terminal. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, if you're using my templates, uh, again, at the time of you watching this video, it should work out of the box for you. Um, but uh, let me show you how I did it, okay? Because there are some super subtle, uh, uh, interesting things, all right? So uh, let's jump into the test suite over here. Uh, I don't know, recently uh, Metal started uh, showing some some stuff there's laying around over there. I actually mean mine, so this one, okay? So I'm using, uh, I'm using Discipline Suite, which is not something that I have shown you here. This is basically to generate, uh, you know, lawful uh, assertions for, you know, um, like monadic laws, monoidal laws, like mathematical laws. Uh, I'm using it because uh, it just automatically extends, you know, Scala Check Suite, which means that I can uh, I can write property driven tests, and then at the end of the day, it actually extends the fun suite from unit. Okay, so basically, this is the whole thing. Uh, it is completely unrelated to everything that I showed you today. Uh, what I did is this one, right? This is just a trait called expectations. Uh, this is my code, right? So it lives over here uh, because this is not a plugin. This is not a library. Uh, you will have exactly this code, and so you will be able to uh, to change a couple of things. Okay, so over here I'm basically saying okay, it's just a trait that has to be mixed in into the functional suite from a unit. It has uh, only uh, three methods over here. If I actually do this, you'll see it has only like these three methods: expect, expect equals, expect not equals. Okay, I'm gonna try to collapse them real quick. This one, this one, and this one. Okay, there's also like a little tiny helper object down there. Okay, so if you go to expect equals, basically what I did, I hijacked the clue from M unit. Okay, 
So basically, I am calculating the new clue and I'm just calling assert equals from immunity, right? So this signature was pretty much stolen from assert equals. So if I go to assert equals, this signature will be exactly the same, okay? So obtained, expected, some clue, implicit location and evidence, just formatted differently, but it's literally exactly the same signature, okay? And so, and therefore I'm calling, you know, obtained, expected, it's just that now I'm inserting my clue, okay? What am I doing there? Nothing impressive, right? I'm just calling expect the assert, obtain equals equals expected. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a catch. This is just a partial function that I just extracted into this object. It's just down there, right? So I'm basically catching the assertion error from expecty. You know, I'm, you know, I'm getting a little bit of stuff out of the string, you know, trimming it how, how I need it. You know, nothing, nothing super impressive. Okay. Uh, I, I do basically, uh, run assertions twice in this case, right? However, there is a super subtle thing, like inside of assert equals, this calculated clue is a by name parameter, right? And it is by name parameter because if the test pass, you don't need to evaluate it. And so I'm only, you know, we're only doing this comparison only when this one already failed, right? So only when this one failed, only then it will evaluate the clue. In order to, to evaluate the clue, it will actually run it through expecty as well, okay? So you actually don't get any, uh, you know, performance uh, uh, penalty if your tests succeed. So yeah, basically I'm just calculating the new description based on expecting, again, nothing fancy. I'm making sure that I'm not losing the, the clue that you're passing in as a user as well, okay? Uh, expect not equals, pretty much the same thing. Uh, I just needed to steal a little bit of code uh, from M unit uh, just because they added this suffix. So I needed to just rearrange a couple of things. So, so this line is pretty much copy pasted straight from assert not equals. In fact, let, let's actually try to go there. Assert not equals this one. Okay. So as you can see, this is pretty much one line. So they do drop inside and then if obtain equals expected, you know, fail, fail the comparison, right? It just said I calculated this thing before. Okay. So if we go back, it's the same thing, right? So over here drop inside, if obtain equals expecting, then fail the comparison. Just said this is the string that I calculated before, okay? Now, the most impressive one is actually expect, okay? Because it requires this inline thing. And why does it require this inline thing? Well, let me show you. So if I remove the inline thing, and I go to uh, back to my back to my example suite, and for example, if I run only this test, I really love this only thing. Uh, like really, where have you been all my life? Okay, so if I run these tests, Look what it tells me, right? It's not as useful as before because it pretty much got lost, you know, got lost the code, okay? So if I uh, actually, you know, inline this condition and inline that one as well, then over here when I'm calling assert on expecty, it actually inserts exactly this code. And so if I run this test now, I will actually have access to the, uh, you know, to the actual program, to the actual tree, all right? I changed one super tiny thing um, and in Scala 3, it was just a choice, uh, because I basically didn't want to run evaluate your Boolean twice. So basically what they did over here in assert is that this condition is actually also by name parameter, which is a little bit unexpected, I would say, right? So the condition is a by name parameter. Again, in Scala 3, I can have inline and a by name parameter, and it's going to work out just fine, right? But because I'm running your code twice. I think that it is safer that I remove it, okay? So I removed it, okay? So that's pretty much it for Scala 3. Now I'm gonna show you how I did in Scala 2. Again, pretty much the same thing, right? There is test suite, and there is expectations, pretty much the same thing. It just said there is no inline in Scala 2, okay? So I had to write my own macro and macros uh, have to live in a separate project. So I'm gonna go to the build and I'm gonna show you that now I have the separate project you know, and, you know, this root project uh, uh, depends on it and it also aggregates it so that, you know, if you run tests, for example, um, I'm sorry, if you run something like clean so that macros is also clean, okay? So if you've never written any macros, uh, this is probably the most trivial macro to write. It's basically the implementation of inline from Scala 3 that is built into the language now in Scala 2. Uh, you just, you know, you write the method uh, signature the same as you would write it before. Um, was one, one exception that uh, you cannot use um, uh, you cannot use default parameters, you cannot use uh, name parameters, which is why it's overloaded over here, right? So I needed uh, two different implementations. Uh, okay, so macro is simply an object which you know lives in this other project, and it has expect without clue and expect with clue. Okay, so if we jump in there, the signature for expect without clue and the signature for 
expect with Clue is going to look pretty much identical to this. It's just that it's going to be sort of like inside out. So uh, basically, if you have never written macros, uh, there's two kinds. There's black box and white box. Black box is a safer one. It just basically means that it runs after the typer. So if the types are there, the macro won't be able to manipulate your program in such a, in, in some weird way. It has to abide, uh, you know, to the type system. So you have this black box context, and uh, basically all of your methods they they start with an extra parameter list, which ha which takes this context. Okay, the rest is pretty much the same, except you know it used to receive a boolean. Now it's a context.expression boolean. Same thing here, same thing here. There are no implicits, there are no by name parameters. Uh, again, no default parameters, no name parameters. And then you import c.universe and then you, you call this refi. Instead of refi, you write exactly the same code as you would write in a normal Scala 2 program. Um, because like, again, this macro is very simple. We don't actually need to inspect any trees or anything. So this is pretty much the same code as I have shown you before. It just says once you finally need to access those values, you need to call splice. You can also use quasi quotes, but I didn't want to use quasi quotes because uh, you know when I'm extracting the message in this you know get clue method, you know I'm using string interpolation in there, and you know I I find this code actually actually quite elegant, right? And the only difference is that over here the original clue I'm getting from the past in parameter, right? So I'm doing clue splice, uh, but in the other one without clue I'm just saying assertion failed. I pretty much copied it, copy pasted it from uh, M unit. Now if you have been using like this is pretty much everything, but if you have been using my templates, you should know that. Uh, in Scala 2, at least, um, I switched the derivation from Scala check shapeless to uh, to Derivo uh, based on Magnolia. I think I removed it from here. If you have a case class that is defined uh, here, let's see if GitHub Copilot can help me, right? You can just go like this, add derive, and notice that we didn't actually need any, any imports, right? So I can go over here, test uh, D, and over here I can start writing, you know, um, for all, and I'm going to say person, person, and, you know, whatever, uh, person.name, um, person.name, right? So I'm basically comparing uh, person.name to Excel, itself, expect equals, right? So let's run actually like only this one. Uh, so I'm in Scala 2, so we need to go and make sure that I zoom into the right one. That is correct. Uh, what I wanted to derive was an arbitrary. There we go. So I was not I was not prepared to to show this to you, but but here's the deal. Okay. So basically, like if it's if the case class is yours, you can do this, and if it's not yours, then you know at any point in time, uh, you should be able to, um, let's say here for example, you would say arbitrary dot instance, right? So that's actually what I wanted to do. So let's go run it, and it's the same instance. Okay. So again, I just I just switched it from Scala check shapeless. And the the way I did this in such a way that you don't actually need any kind of imports is I use the um I use the Y imports um helper. Uh not helper, it's a flag in build.spt. Uh there is a Y imports, and so I'm adding like all of that stuff into test scala C options, right? So you basically say um Y imports, and then you give it like a comma separated list without spaces and stuff. They, they did it in such a way that, you know, for example, this one, like this prop, it actually imports everything that is inside of prop. So it effectively does, you know, import prop, you know, dot underscore dot star in Scala 3. Uh, I don't know why they did it in such a way. Um, if you want to do the same thing in my template for Scala 3, you will have to use this import if you want to do for all, because this Y imports annotation is only available in Scala 3.3, .3, which is, you know, it's probably going to come out like in a couple of weeks from now, and then I'm going to, I'm going to add it uh, here as well. But apart from that, it's pretty much exactly the same. All right. As already mentioned, all of this stuff is going to be part of my Jitter templates. And next time, no promises, but I also might show you how to integrate all of this stuff with uh, Zeo without and you need zeal because there are a couple of things that you know a couple of decisions that were made in there that i don't like and a couple of things that are not working there and i think i pretty much figured it out it's just not super polished yet so i'm not promising but most likely i'll show you how to integrate uh, m unit with uh, zeo and expect and property uh, driven tests as well let me know what you think i hope you enjoyed this one check out the previous one and i see you in the next one for now as always it's been vlad from devintidy.com don't forget to like this video if you did subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you and if you wish to contribute to tech education please consider doing so on patreon it helps sponsors or by joining the youtube membership program and thus Watch my videos before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.